Warning, the following content contains sounds. It has been shown that some sapiens of the Homo have episodic memory towards some sounds. Therefore, forming a bad reaction to certain sounds. Nevertheless, the sounds we use are only to mock actions and notions, which are, of course, ridiculous. We are not mocking the people who have them. No, no, no. Because you know in time, you may change what you do and change what you think. Having said that, this is a correlation sensation. A show where I talk about your mother's mammalian protuberances. Yes, yes. They come in all sorts of shapes, colors and textures and smells. But of course, we will proceed to something more important. Come and get it, come and get it, 81. Dinner for your ears. Uh, dinner for your ear holes. Your holy ears. Of the Holy Roman Empire. Oh, yeah. What? Holy Roman Empire? I'm just... Fuck those guys. Yeah, holy Roman buttholes now here. Oh, yes. The holy Roman butthole. Oh, the butthole of the Roman holiness. Oh, the holy butthole. You know why they suck? They're all dead. No, just kidding. Void. What? That's not nice. Fuck the Roman Empire! Not so holy now. Yeah, but holy. Now, what we do? Void, do you remember what we were supposed to do? Uh, episode 81? Void. What? I love you so much, Void. What? You just state the obvious. Everybody listening knows I'm talking about the topic at hand. I didn't know the topic. I was just trying to fill in time. You sure? Or just try to pass it off as if you you know what's up? No, I was just waiting to hear what you have to say. Don't tell me you're ashamed that you don't remember. No, I just forgot. Not ashamed. Well, then why not just say it? Come okay, out. I forgot. There we go. Progress. Okay. This is a titled Gabriel Fallopio in parentheses, Metal and Inner Ear Anatomy. Okay. I remember now it's uh, Fallopian studying more stuff, but I forgot what he was going to study. Please fill us in. Well, I have no information on what he particularly said about this anatomy. Okay. But I have it on good account. I promise you that he is believed to have described this anatomy very well. Of the middle ear, you said? Middle and inner ear. Middle and inner. Well, in outer ear, too. I mean, that one's easy to do. Yes. So, without a further ado... You know what I know about the ear? Some people have cartilage, and if you hold it still, it'll flop right back out. Try yeah. it with me, folks. Can you hear my ears flipping, flopping? Don't do that. Why? You don't know where those things have been. You told me you had a date last week with some strange female sapien of the homo. She came over, and it was a bust. It was a bust. What, she bust all over you? No, no, not in the best way. She came over here and was moping about and just came over to uh, talk and then nothing happened, which was okay. But she, What? Yeah. She was all hot and bothered and was just saying it to say it. Well, you could have just given her one of the drinks Cosby left here. No, 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 no. 
I'm, I, it's no fun unless they say yes, because that's just fucking weird. Well, that's the whole point. That thing will make them say anything. They can say yes when they're on it. No, they can't. They just mumble and gurgle. I'm not going to ask what they're going to gurgle on. But, uh, consent is important. Cosby is a freak. So, other than uh, rape, we're going to be talking about what we said earlier. Out of all sorts of uh, the wonderful human body parts that were described more accurately than several other previous A people, another region of anatomy that is very important to understanding how our sensory and perception of reality is. The middle and inner ear, specifically, are going to be what we cover today. Like we said five times already. Of all the size and dimensions of your floppy outer flesh, many superficially called ears, which impact the incoming sounds with the ear's angles, of course, I am more interested in the anatomy which uses vibrations to stimulate electrochemical interactions in order to send signals to your brain. Yes, you're hearing air differences. Right? What? The sound of your ears hearing is based on hearing differences in air. That's what sound is. Mm, yeah, uh, more than just that, but well, it's supposed to pick up on that, and some people have different things like ringing in the ear, like muffled ringing. Yeah. When you get muffled. Yeah. I almost got that because of uh, fireworks when I was a little kid, but luckily it was I was still young, so I was able to... Uh, don't tell me you were putting the black cats in your ear holes. No, 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 no. We were put. I put it in a mailbox like a freaking idiot. Yeah? Yeah. Did it go boom? It made more kind of a ping size, but I was way too close because... Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nice. My ears rang for a while, but then it was fine. Next time, try that with uh, what they call those. Shells of the artillery. Oh, that's dangerous one time. Yeah. A guy lit it and nearly killed his friend inside a car. What? Yeah. He lit it inside of a car? Yeah, his friend. What a great friend, boy. I know, he nearly died. Yeah, sounds like not fun. I know, he was pissed. He. Yeah? Yeah. I would have been shitted. In my pants. Yes. Would have made a, been a really stinky day. Yeah, once once my cousin threw one on the ground and we ran for it. But at least the fuse was so long that it was uh, easy to get away from. You know, I lit the firework off. Yeah? And uh, there was a dog that chased after it like I was playing fetch. Oh. I, I was like, well, there's natural selection. There you go, dog. Was the dog okay? Yeah. A lot of people didn't like natural selections idea, so they called the dog away from the boomstick. All right. It would have been a quite an interesting spectacle, I tell you. What was it, firecracker or? It was just one of those blooming ground things, you know, the ones that spin around and make it the pretty colors. That might have been okay, depending on where he grabbed it from. Yeah. Oh, I had a close call. Did I tell you? No, boy. No, it was the similar thing to those flower things, but it's called a dart. They go. Oh, straight. I love those. Those. Guess are what? Awesome. One flew sideways at me, and yeah. it took a while to go off. And I'm like, wait a second. So I watched, listened, and prepared, and got hutched down, ready to leap out of the way. And it came right at me in the chest, and I dodged it. Ah, you know those things that look like a cock, the rooster. Yeah, and the cock has a. A wick coming out of its rear end? Yes. And you light it and it's supposed to like whistle out the rear end? Yeah. Well, this cock, oh, it didn't do that. No, nope. it actually looked like it shat out, like explosively shat out the noisy part. And uh -huh. it just flew into the house. Oh, fun. Yeah. There was also a video I saw of a do uh, small dog picking up a fountain and going into a garage. And then, nice, towards the gasoline and oil, I bet. I think everything was containered, and he was kind of near a motorcycle bike. And then they got away from him. Then he sat down, and then he grabbed it again. Yeah. And then the video ended. Mm. But it was just kind of screaming and yelling because he was going at everyone with it. 
and just picked it up like you said, Fetch. Yeah. Yes, I once even heard the story about uh, someone using sparklers on a uh, on a bottle rocket and tossed it in the air, and it created an explosive. Sounds safe. I know this was like 20 years ago. I think we were just talking about it, and he says, "Watch where you fling it, because you getting you can get burned really bad from them if it maintains contact." So. Things that might get damaged. Yes. By loud sounds. Yes. Coming from things like explosive enemas. Yeah. Or, <laughs> imagine one of those sparkler enema. No, explosive objects. Yes, yes. We're going to use that word. Oh, God. Just thinking about that, they'd probably die and you'd bleed out your ass. You don't think it would just singe it? Me like a big blister. No, I, oh, you mean the sparkler. I thought you uh, meant the explosive. Or a fountain. I I think a fountain would actually probably do third-degree burns. Yeah, you know, it might you might have a blistery rectum. Yeah, I think it would actually be safer to tie it in front, facing you like a cone off of your body, away from you. Yeah, kind of like a cock cover. Yeah. Like one of those gourds they use in those, you know, you ever seen nature? Yeah. Yeah, those pictures of the... You know, the natives in some tribal areas where yeah. they put gorgs, gourds over their cocks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if that's what you have to protect yourself from it, why not? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, back back again. Back to topic. You want to move on to topic now? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. So, some of the uh, objects that Gabriel Fallopio is credited for observing and investigating and uh, documenting are the oval and the round windows. The semicircular canals, the cochlea, the tympani, and the scala vestibuli. Isn't that nice? Yes. So, let's go down deep into your ears, listeners. As my illustrious voice travels into your ear holes, the tube is called the ear canal, much like that of a toilet paper roll tube. But, like everything else, this ear canal, also known as the outer ear, comes to an end. At the end, you have a tympanic membrane. And if you do a little search on Google's Abugles for this tympanic membrane with images, you will see that it appears to be a structure which has existed prior to human evolution, which humans appear to mimic with their ape-man instrument designs, like the drum. Isn't that kind of funny? Yeah. They, uh, they invented... An object called a drum. Uh-huh. Then they named an object that was there before they even existed in other species mm -hmm. a drum. Yes. Man, wow, that's nice. Yes. Now, my voice bangs your eardrums, which transmits waves to three tiny bones, Void. Uh-huh. To feel the vibrations. Yes. Picking up the vibrations of my voice. <laughs> I'm inside of your head now. <laughs> yes. Ah. Splooging up oh, your yeah. ear, ear canals. Yes. The first known observation of these three little bones in your ears were found in the 1600s after Gabriel Fallopio by some human name, Alessandro Acciolini, located in what is called the tympanic cavity, which is a hollow space. It's also called the middle ear. Middle ear. And these bones are collectively known as ossicles. The most outer slash lateral ossicle is called the malleus. Malleus, as one could tell with a short correlation sensation, is Latin for hammer or mallet. This structure moves as my voice bangs your tympanic membranes, which rubs up against the bone. The movement, then, is transmitted to the second ossicle called the incus. Incus is Latin for anvil. As the mallet hits the anvil, the sound travels to what is called the third ossicle, or stapes. Stapes is Latin for stirrup, for its structure appears to resemble a device used to stand upon when one rides a four-legged beast with a saddle. And no, Void, I'm not talking about some of your sexual excursions. Uh, interesting. I was going to just say that 
You may not feel like this, but our eardrums are natural reverb. Yes, sound reverberates off your eardrums. Yes. But that reminds me of the uh, mini uh, spring reverb and re- room reverbs that they made for recording. Ah. Anyways, at this point, these tapes transmit movement to what is called the oval window, which isn't that much different from the timpani. These ossicles, called the malleus incus and stapes, are the tiniest bones that they know of in the human body, by the way, Void. Wow. Which would explain why it took nearly 50 years for someone else to discover it. Probably a hundred. It just said 1600s on a quick glance, but, uh, eh, it could have been different, whatever. I'll probably cut this part out as I mumbled along. Unlike the Malleus Incus and Stapes, the oval window is believed to have been observed by Gabriel Fallopio. The structure that this oval window is a part of is called the cochlea. At this point, signals from my soothing voice, banging your ear hole drums, have reached the inner ear. The cochlea is the next point of transmission. The cochlea is Latin for snail shell, void, Mm -hmm. which is what I liken this anatomical lovely bit to. I searched on deepdive.com, PubMed, and Google, and even Bing, but found a jack diddly squat on the Gabriel Fallopio talking about this shit. And what he said about the scale of vestibuli. So I will go over what I feel that he may have not known at all about this structure. Now... This nail shell in your temporal bone is separated by what some call the scala media. Now, boy, the scala media uh-huh. is more like an object which contains the functions that transmit the sound waves mm-hmm. inside of your cochlea. We will not go over into this because there's no way in hell Gabriel knew about this. Oh, because it's not re- you can't really see it without knowing about more higher brain functions. Gotcha. Well, that and probably more magnification than Gabriel had. And plus, you know, things turn to mush. And, uh, you don't really know much about what you're looking at without so many different chemical processes that they they developed over the hundreds of years afterwards. Mm. So, Source 3 has a simple anatomical illus- illustration, while Source 4 has a more in-depth view of what it would look like if someone performed a sagittal cut on the cochlea. In layman's terms, looking down the barrel of the cochlea. I know, Source 4 is Wikipedia, and not the direct sources that were supposed to be cited on Wikipedia, but I have a textbook called Sensory and Perception, which also has a picture with this view, and it looks quite similar. In the illustrations of the inside of the cochlea, Many would erroneously assume that this appears hollow, without fluid, if you will. What is inside this snail shell is inside of your temporal bone is called paralymph, which is a fluid of a higher ratio of sodium and a lesser ratio of potassium. Britannica, which is source 6, indicates that the paralymph in your scale of vestibuli has about 150 milliequivalents per liter of sodium and 5 milliequivalents per liter of potassium, formed by blood plasma, according to Britannica, and similar to what is called by many to be the extracellular fluids, which are between cells. While reading Britannica's article, they implicitly stated that there is some disagreement upon the connection between cerebrospinal fluid contributing to the paralymph inside of your cochlea. While the least credible source, which I did not cite at all, Because it's Wikipedia, which has, at first glance on my browser, um, it's a statement that the paralymphatic ducts allow secretion of your cerebral spinal fluid into the paralymph, while Britannica says the studies that they show show this is highly unlikely and it comes from capillaries. Now, once the sound travels down this one side of the cochlea to the tip, end of the cochlea, also known as the helicotrema, or the apex. This, at this moment, allows the sound to travel further, 
back to the source, but on the other side, towards what is called the round window. Round window. Yeah. They other- must not get, how come no Latin round window or whatever it would be, but I guess they're just making it the easiest possible to identify something. Yes. And the first side with incoming sound waves is called the scala vestibuli, while the second side is called the scala tympani. Mm-hmm. So that's where it leaves to go to the brain to be uh, uh, dissected. No. No? Oh, okay. Sorry. No. Actually, the vestibuli media is what has the special bits in the metal traveling through the barrel of your cochlea to connect to nerves. Ah. Which is connecting to the vestibular cochlear nerve. Ah. Oh, which leads to... Gotcha. Leads to many places, boy. Yes. Yeah. It's so crazy how quickly sound can be deciphered based upon the processes and the, where it travels. Did you hear that if you hold something in front of your ears, you can actually hear your real voice of how you sound? Bullshit. Yeah. So say if you put the piece of paper right here and go like this, you hear your actual oh, voice. Oh, come on, tita, whoop, whoop, dee, whoop, bee, da, pa, 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 do, bo, bo. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Isn't that weird? Oh, yeah. That's because you don't have all the reverberation to... Oh, I didn't even talk about the eustachian tool. Yeah, because it's basically what you hear in your own head is different because you're hearing the bone reverberation first. Yeah, and there's also inside of the middle ear, tympanic cavity, uh, down in the inferior portion, there's something called the eustachian tool void. Mm -hmm. And that connects your uh, nasal cavity and your throat cavity to your ear. Oh, which would obviously cause more bass sound from yes. the reverberation. Yes, because I noticed that my voice sounds deeper to real people than to myself. I mean, in, in the real world compared to myself, I sound higher than I am. Wait, so you think your voice is more higher than it is? Yeah. Huh. Because don't I have a pretty low voice? Not super low, but medium. It's meaty. How about that? We want to say it's meaty. Yes. Voice, meaty voice in your ear holes. Yes. Banging your drums of your ears. Yes. It's just a literal gangbang of our voices. Yes. Penetration. You don't want penetration. That's bad for the eardrum. Perforation's bad. I didn't say perforation. I said penetration. I know, but still, be careful with your ears, people. It's very important not to penetrate your ears. I'm pretty sure most of the listeners are capable of understanding that sticking foreign objects in your ear holes are not good, Void. Yes, I know, especially Q-tip, not very good. Who do you think our listeners are? Well, they're listening to us, aren't they? What's wrong with that? Nothing. What? What, you think because we're not stupid as NPR that we're going to be bad? No. I was just, it was a joke because. What? You talking shit on us? No. Void. Opposite. We're I awesome. I want to hear that. I bring brain all over. Okay. Let's not speak of his name. You can bleep that out anyways. So, besides the cochlear void. Yes. Another structure that's believed to have been found and described by Gabriel Fallopio uh, is called the semicircular canals. They are attached and could be argued to be part of the cochlea. Altogether, the cochlea, along with the semicircular canals, is something that I see similarities in with the nautilus. You ever seen those? Yes. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Or a squid. Uh-huh. Or an octopus. Yes. That's why ears had a lot of uh, sea imagery back in the olden times. What? I'm saying they used to represent a lot of ears with sea creatures and stuff when writing and drawing about it. Where? Where is your source? I'm just saying on sea creatures like Poseidon and all that kind of stuff. What, medieval pictures had a picture of Poseidon inside of your ear? No, no, I'm saying... What, Poseidon got mad and that's why your eardrum burst? He just poked, he used a scepter. 
He just jabbed it right inside your ear horse. No, no, I'm just saying ears of sea creatures and sea stuff always had those, like, shells around their ears. And plus, people, you could hear the ocean in the uh, sea, sh- or in uh, a conch shell. Well, please, I would love to see the pictures where they show sea objects inside of your ears for anatomy back in the medieval time. I want to see it. No, no, I think this is pre that. Pre medieval? Yeah. Classical? I don't know, maybe, but. Ancient? Please. I want to know for it. This is very interesting. Please? No? Let me see. Let me see. Ancient. Where are we going to look? Ancient depictions. Of ear anatomy. I see a goat. Oh, sorry. There you go, dropping the corpse's bones again. Larry has picking my teeth. Oh, that's cute. Why? Looks like a sea otter. Oh, they got these cute little things. Oh, man. Look at that. Whoa. See, this is what happens when you don't look up stuff. Cork looks stuff up. Doesn't tell you what you're looking at. I see a picture of an earring that has an octopus that looks like it's about ready to enter inside of an ear canal. I have... Ooh, boy. What? I have one of those head things, those headbands on this, this search browser. Uh-huh. And it has these fins. That look like they cover up your ears to make it look like your ears are made out of fins. Oh, that's cool. Sorry, this is tangent going up. I thought uh, it was older more. No, nah, maybe I should go down further. I can't find anything about this boy. Okay, let's keep go. Let's keep on talking. No, boy, we gotta. I want to be proven that you are right. That's okay. We got black wolf ears. What? What is this furry land? Why are you looking on Bing oh or Google? Oh my god. They got the fox tail butt plug. Why well, you look up sea creature ears and you get fox tail butt plug. I... What the fuck? I don't know, but now you're looking up costume stuff that's different. No. It was top suggestions based off of what I just searched. Sea creatures with ears. No, sea creatures in ears. And it shows up that. They need to work better with their AI before they start pretending like they can make a robot that acts like a human. Jeez. Yeah, they're at least 50 years away from anything that's realistic. Why? Well, depends on what kind of human you're talking about. But let's go back to topic, Void. Okay, sorry for the tangent. Well, I mean, I pushed it. I mean, I could have easily just dismissed it like a lot of people would have. But I'm really interested to see... Where you came up with that mumbo jumbo? Okay, maybe it's more the shell part, the snail shell. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, boy. You know what? You could you could probably do some research on that. Maybe you can find something that proves what you said right. Oh, okay. That'll be homework. Yeah. So. Anyways. Just lateral and superior to your cochlea lies the semicircular canals. In most cases, the semicircular canals consist of three loops. Each have their pathways seemingly set up for different orientation. To pick up on the various movements or outside impacts could have on their head. Which is a good thing, considering that these semicircular canals are used for orientation information. You know that feeling you get when you tilt your head from left to right, Mm -hmm. or spin around in circles, or do uh, flips of the back. Just like the cochlea, there is paralymph inside the semicircular canals, as well as another fluid called endolymph. Mm -hmm. Have you ever woken up and you've been all dizzy because you slept on one side? 
until you're like, whoa, what the hell? And you're all like stumbly. I've woken up with my one side asleep. You ever do that? Yeah. With your arm like asleep, right? Uh huh. And then you're like, oh, fuck, I can't feel shit. And then you move, you move your arm, and it's like a dead thing, and it just slaps you in the face like, like one of those corpses' arms. Yeah. Were you sleeping with the corpses again? What? What? You know that's my favorite thing to do. Especially considering the weekend we have with all the storms. They scared the baguzi out of me. Well, how many did you find in a tree? I didn't find any in the tree. Oh. No, I had to spend the night with the two corpses I found. Oh. Yeah. I was scared shitless. I was in there shaking. The trees fell down. There's a tree that fell down in the neighborhood. Yeah. Whole tree. I know there are several here too. Yeah. There was, you know, the trees where we live are huge. And they got this limb that's really big but not fully detached from the tree. Just dangling overhead on one of the streets. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you're almost playing Russian roulette. Or what's that one type of game where people take a knife and try to stab in between your fingers? Six finger fillet or five finger fillet? Huh? Five finger fillet? Yeah, whatever you call it. I know there's another name for it, but that's a name I've heard of too. Nah. So, when it comes to indolymph, Britannica indicates that indolymph has nearly the polar opposite ratio of paralymph. Which makes sense because they'll allow for a conductivity inside of your semicircular canals. This endolymph has anywhere, has somewhere around 140 milliequivalents of potassium with 15 milliequivalents of sodium. The paralymph is indicated on Britannica's site for being outside, in the outside inner portion of the semicircular canals, while the endolymph appears to be in the center of the inside of the semicircular canal. Now, these semicircular canals actually loop. They do a loop-de-loo, and one connects to another and another. It's kind of like, you know, those earrings they have on the ears where you have, like, multiple ones? Mm -hmm. Kind of like that, but they're all connected, and it's more like one piece instead of a bunch of, you know, going through holes in the ear, of course. Yes. And uh, at the very end, towards the base back where it started, you know, in the loop, you have this thing in there, and it's kind of bulbous. It's called an ampule. Ampule, what's that do? That's to your semicircular canals. Okay. And inside these things called the ampules are something called a capula. Source 7 communicates that uh, the capula is some sort of barrier which inhibits the free flow of endolymph inside of your semicircular canals. Okay. This allows for the ionized fluid to distort the capula, which is like in the center of the ampule. This capula actually has what are called hair cells within it mm -hmm. that protrude from the epithelium, which is like, you know, the layer of tissue, you know, basically containing all the fluid. Uh huh. And the epithelium in the semicircular canals are called crista. So, signals are sent from these hair cells to your vestibular cochlear nerve. So that's how people can have damaged hair cells on the outside, and so the hearing may not be as well. Yeah. Well, not in the semicircular canals. Oh, okay. I believe they have hair cells inside the cochlear, too. The thing that really s picks up the sound vibrations inside of your cochlea mm -hmm is actually called the organ of Corti, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. I worked with the person that had no hairs in their ears. Yeah? Yeah, they got the hearing aid, and they could hear it really better. It was funny. When they first adjusted to uh, talking with their hearing aid, they, they couldn't understand guys' voices because they were so deep. Huh. Well, that sounds like there's damage inside of the most deepest part closer to the apex Yes. Of your cochlea. Like, that's kind of contradictory to what some may, you know, intuitively believe yes. about the cochlea. The wider portion, which is the most closest portion to your oval and 
round windows is wider. Mm-hmm. And when you get to the tip, it becomes smaller. Uh-huh. And uh, the one closer to the tip, the apex, it picks up lower wave frequencies. Mm-hmm. While the closer you get to it, it picks up higher wave frequencies. Uh-huh. And mm-hmm. let, me, let me go look up this depiction. Huh? Okay. I think they had multiple damage, and I think it was... Uh... Uh, they were born that way. It wasn't from hearing loss, so I believe it was a genetic thing. Like I didn't do any research on it because I didn't want to. But now we're on the topic. Okay. And I've read, I've read it a while ago, like a while, while ago. Okay. Like it being a two minutes. Okay. You know how they say a minute is a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, a minute really isn't much more than, not much more and not much little. It is exactly sixty seconds. Yes. You know, and 60 seconds on this planet has not changed very much at all. One could even argue it hasn't changed at all. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know why a minute seems to be longer than it really is to some people. I think it's a way of expression. Yeah, they're expressing how ridiculously weird they are. What does someone say it's been an hour? Is it a lifetime for them? All right, what about half a minute? Well, it hasn't been very long, but it's been about half a minute, not a minute. This has been language with Gork. Oh, I'm just picking at this thing. Yeah, Just no. trying to understand the logic between saying it's been about a minute. Oh, no, I think it's, uh, I think it's a uh, opposite then. Like, you say something as small when it's big, or when something is big, you say it's small. Well, then why do people say a jiffy? Jiffy's faster. Jiffy actually stands for like a split second. I'm, I'm just baffled. There's a lot of contradictions going on. And, uh, you know, Void, it's been kind of hard to understand these people. Maybe you should get the jiffy out of your ears. Void. What? Jiffy is an abstract unit for time. I thought it was peanut butter. Peanut? Why would I have peanut butter in my ears, Void? I know, but isn't that what peanut butter name is, Jiffy? It's a brand. Oh. And there's also a freaking company called Jiffy Lube. Yeah, well, it's because it's Quick Lube. Ha, ha, ha. What's so funny? Nothing. Lube. Lube is very important, Void. There's I know. nothing funny about lube. Yes, you're very serious about it, I know. Oh, I know. One time, my engine ran out of oil. You know how bad it is when you don't have lube inside of your engine? I know. My car exploded. Sorry. No, it's okay. It only just cracked, and so we sold it for scrap, and they put the new engine in, and so he used it for four-wheeling. Nah. I'm I'm sorry. I, I took the oil out of your car. Uh, I was in California at this time. You didn't know me back then. I mean, you did, but yeah. not current. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. Well, Captain Gooch Gobbler had me, uh, you know, tailing behind your every which move. Oh, no wonder. It, it was around the airport where Harrison Ford crashed that one time on a golf course. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I took the oil out of him, too. That was actually just a malfunction. Man, it was a malfunction in his part. Yeah, well, at least he safely said, I only have one place to put down. He put it down on the golf course, and so he skillfully crashed the plane in a safe area. Well, if I took the oil out of Harrison Ford, it would totally impact his central nervous system because the oil is used to lubricate his brain. For <laughs> He's just plain dead, saying Chewbacca, rawr, and crashing. Yeah, so the movement... Of the tectoral membrane actually stimulates the hair cells connecting to your vestibular cochlear nerve, which is what causes the ionization and then the action potential to send signals to your brain. Maybe that was the issue. Maybe it was just a weak one, and so maybe their hairs weren't picking up stuff. Yeah, because the of course, the louder the sound is, the more damage you could cause to the tiny little hair cells. Yes. I wish that the hair, like the actual stuff that everybody calls a hair, would get damaged because the hair on the outer rim of my inferior parts of my ears are very long. 
like so long, about three quarters of an inch long. And it's all up and down my lobe. And I look like a fairy tale creature sometimes when I don't shave. I feel like there's something wrong with this this body that I have inhabited. It's fine. Everyone's fuzzy. Yeah, but I'm really fuzzy. Ah, oh, speaking of fuzzy, Void. What? Do you have hairs that grow on the tip of your nose? Too small to tell. I got one long one. Uh-huh. It comes out. It's about an eighth inch long to a quarter inch long sometimes. Uh-huh. I pluck it, but every time I pluck it, it comes back. I got the extreme nose hairs and ears hair. Plus also... Ears hair? Ear hair, yeah. My nose, my nose hair is really hairy too. Yeah? Yeah. Nice. Oh, you know the squirrel hunter? Yeah. So I got a link from him. Yes. You know he does music? As well? Yeah, it's pretty good. I like it. It's good music for driving at night when you're trying to bury a body. Oh, okay. Is yeah. it is it techno rocky? It kind of like... You know, old school hip hop, how they took different uh, clips of different classical music. Uh huh. And some would say it's like elevator music, although I think that's kind of rude. Yeah. And uh, it sounds pretty good. Mm hmm. Yeah. When I, I think he already gave me permission to play it. Okay. But I'm waiting for a response back because, you know. You want to make double short. Yeah, because I may have gotten that information in January. But a lot has changed since then. Yeah, so you want to g- get an update. Yeah, there's a different ape man in office. That's not really the case, but maybe his situation changed. Yeah, right. And he published a lot of stuff in January, too. Uh-huh. Pretty good. He's got he's got some good shit. Oh, okay. We have another uh, fan. We do? Yeah, fan number 13. 13? Oh, lucky number. Yeah, his name is... uh. Joe. Joe. Yeah. He said he, uh, he's a pretty well versed in understanding nuts. Uh huh. And, uh, Joe would like to be the expert on nuts. Okay. The nut examiner or nut I expert? I think nut expert is what he specifically said, so we will not call him that. Okay. But, you could basically understand if a nut is good by tasting it, right? Yeah. So he will be the nut taster. Okay. Yeah, he'll be tasting all the nuts. Okay. Before they get, you know, driven down to the squirrel hunter. Yeah. He's got to make sure that the right flavor of nut goes to the squirrel hunter. Yes. For catching the right type of squirrel. Yes. So, we have hunter. Uh-huh. Squirrel hunting around in Texas. Then we have the nut gatherer. She lives in my box with me. Oh. Then we have the nut picker who picks the nuts from the gatherer. Mm-hmm. Then we have the nut commander that commands the nuts to obey. Okay. And then what else we have, Void? Wasn't there one about the... Uh, nut robber. Yeah. We have the nut robber. Don't we have uh, something to do with rocks, too? Yeah, this nut robber makes sure the nuts are good and shiny. Yes. Should the nut taster come before the nut robber? The nut taster come before the nut robber? Uh, I think maybe after. Yeah? Yeah. So he gets to taste the nut after it's been robbed? Yeah. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah. Make sure nothing nasty tasting got on the nut. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, and we also have a nut, nut trapper. Uh huh. They they trap nuts too. Uh huh. Because sometimes not all the nuts are on the tree. Mm hmm. Then we got someone to drive those nuts down. Uh huh. The nut driver. Yeah. Then at that point, I think the nut taster should be with the nut driver to taste the nuts. Uh huh. To save time, you know, because you're driving the nuts there. Yeah. yeah. You might want to taste the nuts while you're going there. That way, you're not taking the extra time before they get driven. Mm hmm. And then while at home, we have 
the wood splitter. Uh-huh. And the rock smasher. Yeah. Then we have the stone grinder. Uh-huh. The rock melter. Uh-huh. I mean, the rock milker. Uh-huh. And then we have the witch doctor. Oh, okay. Yup. We got a pretty good tribe going on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to see what kind of other persons we get. And they all got free t-shirts that glow in the dark. Cool. With our emblem that's a negative of our normal emblem. Mm -hmm. On the black shirt with Celtic writing with the podcast title and cursive writing for my favorite quote of all time. Yes. Whoa. And uh, that's free, by the way. Uh-huh. Pretty good shit. Yes. Oh, I got contacted on Instagram. I don't know how true it is. Uh-huh. But this person said we'd be a good uh, podcast to uh, have an advertiser called Smooth My Balls. I think it's smooth my balls. Let me look it up. Yeah, smooth my balls. And it wasn't smooth my balls directly, so I was like skeptical. So I contacted smooth my balls. Uh huh. I said I think we would be a good match. Uh huh. I tried doing this keto thing. Uh huh. But this keto coffee company did not reply back. Okay. I have a feeling they were not interested. Okay. Bastards. Your loss. Keto coffee suck balls. Especially yours. Whatever the name of your crap is. You could suck my anus. Probably tastes better than your coffee crap. How's that? I could have said, Mmm, what is this you got here, Void? It looks like you're more on spot. Like you're sharp. You're on time and it looks like you have, might have had... Lion's mane or chaga or mushroom in your coffee. Can I have a taste? Oh, medium chain triglycerides, too. Oh, that's really good for brain fuel. Oh, good thing we're a brain podcast. We could have drank this shit, make us taste good, or make us sound good, and they go, Ooh, yeah, this brand is great. What's the name of this brand, Void? Void could have read off whatever crap they told him to read, and then we could have said, yep, we drink it. You should, too, listener. And they fucked up by not responding. Right, Void? Sometimes maybe they're busy. I don't know. Yeah, probably busy playing with their roasted nuts. We need a nut roaster. We can roast their nuts. Okay, maybe the next uh, tribe member. Yeah, once we get enough wood split, we'll have some excess wood. We can light on fire and roast their nuts. Uh-huh. Yeah, that'd be a new way to smooth my balls. That'd be faster than a razor. Uh-huh. We probably just lost the razor ad. Huh. No, no, you can edit it out if you feel I want to keep it up. I think i got to be honest. Okay. Keto brains or some bullshit. Uh-huh. Void. Yeah. Did you know Gabriel Fallopio was able to separate the facial nerve from the vestibular cochlear nerve in order to show that there's multiple... Nerves there. That's cool. Yeah. He he discovered, you know, 11 out of the 12 cranial Damn. nerves. That's uh, nearly 90%. I think I've already said it before, like in the first two episodes about this Gabriel Fallopio dude. Uh-huh. But I think it was like seven or eight cranial nerves he said there were. Uh -huh. But he saw 11. Uh-huh. Did not label them cranial even though they came out of the same area. Uh-huh. The brainstem. Uh-huh. We're going to cover someone else. Okay. I'm going to talk about someone other than the Flopian face man. Okay. Yeah. So, if you want the free t-shirt, you follow, subscribe, like, share, comment, give a review. Prove. Prove that you listen to us. Okay. Because what's the point of you wearing a shirt if you're not going to say, hey, these guys are good? Uh-huh. Yeah, if you're going to wear a shirt and say, yeah, I got this shirt for free for doing this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I don't listen to them. I'm not really a fan, but I uh, I wear the shirt because I like the shirt. Blah, blah, blah. No, nobody's going to listen to podcasts if you say that. Yeah. You say, I listen to these dudes. They're funny. They're cool. I like their nuts because they're really tasty. Because they proved it with their QA. Uh-huh. Quality assurance on the Nate, te the Nate tester. The nuts tester. Uh-huh. But, but, yeah. Man, you got to you gotta really be a fan. Okay. And if you're not a fan, please become one. Please become one. Yes.
Yeah, and you'll be surprised at the age range of people who are our fans. Oh. The witch doctor is 70. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and uh, what is it, the rock grinder or the stone grinder? Yeah, stone grinder and stone milker. Uh-huh. They're both teenagers. Oh, wow. I mean, we have a wide variety. So, yeah, do that. All right. Yeah, we leave in peace. Bye. Bye.